I think you know what our view is. We think the thing ought to be uh, uh, repealed and replaced entirely. Getting rid of Obamacare because we think it destroys the health care system is going to make it an inferior quality of care system. I want to repeal the law of the land. Is that clear? Is that clear? I, I, I pose yeah. the bannerism to you. Is, is, are they going to actually be able to repeal this thing or is replacement now the order of the day for the GOP? I, I, well, I personally think that, you know, this is a lot of talk. I don't think that they're actually going to try to repeal this law. When I contacted people who actually wanted this law repealed to begin with, I contacted Senator Cruz's office and talked to them. They said, look, everybody on the House side is just taught, they're behind the scenes. They're just saying, look, we want to change some of the laws in Obamacare. We really, they're really not going to repeal this. This is just all talk, and that's what's going on. So I think that's what we're seeing here. I think all of a sudden everybody wants to jump on the repeal bandwagon, but I don't think they think it's going to be possible. I think they're just kind of politicizing this right now. Is it all talk? I want to bring in our guest, John Graham. He's a health uh, healthcare policy analyst, and he is also a columnist for The Apothecary, the Forbes blog on healthcare policy, and a senior fellow at the National Center for Policy Analysis. Uh, John, thank you very much for joining. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure. Let's start first with the breakdown of these numbers. Uh, we, we know that we don't have enough enough people who have signed up in the younger brackets for this law, but is that something the administration can massage and finesse with time? Could we see a place going forward where they actually skew those numbers more in their favor, or is this a really negative indicator for the, uh, the future of this law, the, the age brackets uh, specifically? It's, it's a real negative indicator. As you pointed out, they've got about 25 percent of the people who have enrolled are in that 20-something age bracket. You needed about 40 percent to make it actuarially effective according to the premiums that the insurers put in there. And they can't massage this. I mean, at some point, the real ages and health status of the people who have signed up have to be uh, really disclosed. I mean, the insurers have to receive premiums from these people and then start paying their medical claims. And the other piece of information about this that the, the administration uh, doesn't, uh, is not willing to promote if you look at state by state, look at all the money they spent on selling and promoting and marketing Obamacare, it cost about $40,000, $50,000, or $60,000 per enrollee to sign these people up, uh, paying off the community organizers and union organizers to go out and sign these people up. So this is a big failure. You know, uh, Buck and, and, and our guest John laid out all of the reasons why Obamacare is not a done deal. We don't know who is signing up. We don't know who's actually paying. Um, and all of that remains to be seen. But if we just look at the crass politics of this, I, I got to be honest, all that matters to me right now is getting a Republican in the White House in 2016. And so with Obamacare and 2014 on the horizon, I have to ask, um, is 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 the way that you do that by proving that Republicans can legislate and govern and therefore attempting to fix aspects of this law and prove that we can be good stewards? Or is getting a Republican in the White House um, easier if Obamacare and all its clunkiness continues to exist, right? Do we repeat 2010 and 2014 to get to 2016? Right. Or do we do the good thing and try to actually make the law work? Do Republicans let the stench of this thing just waft around the American people, or do they actually try <laughs> I mean, to it's a terribly it crass question, but, I think, but I, think I think it's important. I think you do both. You have to go in and look at how we can make, how we can repeal and replace this law, put together a form like they're, doing, they're talking about doing today. And then I think you're going to see Obama go in and veto that law, obviously, and That's prevent right. the Senate if we win it. And then you go in and say, all right, well, let's fix this hand in hand. We can take out little pieces and try to insert new pieces, but at the end of the day, we're winning both places because we have the base saying you need to repeal and replace this law. So we're going to go full front. We're going to try to do that. What, what's yeah. fascinating is that when you look at the, the most recent polling we also have on who want a repeal to happen, they want, will the individual mandate, 41 percent, they want that to be repealed, which of course is necessary for the, less of, the rest of this law to function. It seems there's a disconnect. I'm not sure. The disconnect that, is if you go down your chart right there, is that 14 percent next to no pre-existing conditions, right? So what everybody wants is they want the pre-existing conditions mm -hmm. clause to remain. They want the individual mandate to be taken out, which but is fundamentally unworkable. It. Yeah. 
How Fundamentally, can it be that does not then work. at that point. Well, and even Republicans. Uh, I mean, Republicans are, are are all saying <laughs> we want to keep those those pre-existing conditions as part of the thing. I mean, even they acknowledge that politically they can't take that out. John, yeah. is there a break the glass plan, so to speak, for Democrats here with regard to the individual mandate specifically? They've kicked the can down the road. They've tried all this stuff. They've extended the deadline. I know they don't say it's an extension, but we all know common English and it is an extension. Um, is there something they can do here to deal with that part of the poll that at least 41 percent of people want the individual mandate to go away? Is there any way they can do that without having this whole thing collapse? Well, no, they can't. And that's why they're obviously they've uh, there's been about 38 major changes in the law of which most people would say at least 20 or more are potentially in contravention of the law. And all of that is to get through November and not actually impose any mandates on employers or individuals. And some insurance company executives are saying premiums are going to double next year because the administration has effectively done uh, something which really cannot be done in an insurance market, is allow you to wait until you become sick to get health insurance. Right. That's and uh, that's fundamentally impossible. It's not that's insurance. Not that's not insurance. Right. You can't do it. Let, yeah. let, let me yeah. tie c together a couple of points if I can here. Your political question isn't so crass when you reconcile with the point Raf was making, which is that we will not repeal Obamacare over the next two years because we do not have the presidency. Anything mm. should the Republicans even win the Senate that they choose to do will be vetoed by President Obama. Right. So a full repeal doesn't seem to be possible until 2016. So then that leads you to the question, well, what should we do? All right. Right. So I'll, let me turn that back to John. Republicans replacement yeah. mechanism, the replacement proposal. What should that look like? As in what could get accomplished? What can we do with the hulking carcass of Obamacare? Well, I, I, it is very challenging. I think you've got a difference between the House side where there's a lot of different ideas, but as we've seen, the leadership can't consolidate around one idea, one replacement bill, and I think if they were going to, they would have done it by now. Uh, so I'm not expecting to see a full-on replacement bill out of the House. What I think is going to be interesting in the Senate, uh, yesterday six Democratic, well, five Democratic senators and one independent uh, put forward a bill to they say it's going to fix Obamacare. It would actually expand Obamacare. But people like Senator Landrieu of Louisiana are desperate to vote for something that would kind of fix Obamacare because uh, she's going into an election this November with that hanging around her neck. So the interesting things, I'm not sure if they're going to be good, but the interesting things, I think, are going to be uh, attempts at bipartisanship in the Senate. Uh, I'm not optimistic that that will get rid of Obamacare or... or, mm -hmm. or, or the worst parts of Obamacare, but I think it's a big challenge. And I, you know, if if I was in charge of a replacement bill, I would give every American uh, a, a tax credit of two thousand five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars, and a family would get eight thousand dollars or some number like that. And you'd go out and buy the health insurance that works for you and your family. Well, that means you're getting rid of the employer-based health care system, aren't you? This is the buzzsaw Republicans run into all right, the time, right. mm -hmm. and they have not figured out how to triangulate that. Well, why would we need, I saw this article in Politico, Mary Landrieu and others were saying that we need to fix Obamacare. They laid out a few things. For example, um, that was one of them. And uh, why can't they just do it? Why do they need legislation? That's what I, it seems to me that this is sort of a trap, right? Because if Republicans get on board for any legislation, they're a part of the problem. And Obama has been willing to just make it oh, up as he goes along and everything else. Why don't Democrats just do it? Well, that's what I mean. That's what I was wondering. And what is the cost? If this does get repealed eventually, I mean, like, how, what is, has anyone looked at that? What the cost will be for the American people if this gets repealed based on everything that's already been done that's, that's just so messed up? So, so I, I, I don't know if anything, if there's even an answer to this. I have a feeling it's going to be messy, Sarah, and very <laughs> difficult. That much I do know. Uh, John, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your expertise. Thank you.